Mark, great to see you. Hey, Joe. Great to be back again. Love to talk to you. It's always fun. Yeah, it really is. Thanks for carving out some time. So, hey, listen, I'm sure a lot of our viewers and listeners and listeners are very familiar with you and, and your role at WatchGuard, but there may see there may be some newbies around there who, who are just getting up to speed. So give us a little bit about your role at the company. You bet. So I've been with the company, gosh, going on 15 years now. So um, I've seen a lot of changes. A lot of things have uh, changed in the marketplace. A lot of things have changed in the company itself. My responsibility at the company today is to ensure the health and welfare of our channel partners um, to make sure they are enabled to do what they need to do and the growth that they want to achieve. And then overall, the performance worldwide for our, our channel partners. Yeah, I was going to ask, is, is, is your focus uh, US or is it global? It sounds like it's global. Yeah, my role is global. Um, I previously had um, the field marketing team as well, which is a great team that we had scattered around. They were all there uh, focused on the success of the channel and driving business um, to and through the channel. So although I have handed that off to another manager within the company, I still get to engage with the field marketing people. I talk to partners every day. Um, and we're always looking at the evolution of that partner community, um, as well as adding in new types of partners um, into the structure. Um, that allows us to grow as a company. It allows us to expand um, in who we're able to touch down at the end user customer level. And it's just a very exciting place to be. I think it's one of the most exciting places. I know you're not gonna hear this from every channel person, but I love it. I think the channel is awesome. Yeah, I mean, the thing with the channel that I love is, is the fact that you deal with so many owners, right? Owners, operators who are building these businesses that are sort of the lifeblood of, of sometimes I say Main Street USA, but I shouldn't because it's it's the global Main Street, so to speak. Um, so so and, and also mid-market enterprise as well, but it's so great to see so many owners, operators, growing their businesses. So, you know, from your vantage point, um, we're recording this in mid-November, 2022. Before we do a look ahead, give me a little bit of a snapshot, a look back. What have been some of the key priorities for the partner program over the last few months? So um, I'm gonna actually go back a little farther than a few months, cause it's okay. been a pretty crazy turn. Um, you know, we've had lots of things going on. We've had, um, uh, lockdowns. We've had people who don't want to travel. Um, we've had people who shouldn't travel. We've launched products into the marketplaces. We've had people decide they're going to work at home and not go back to an office. That entire exercise over the last two years has really changed how we need to engage with our partner. And first and foremost, it's really impart important for us and my team is to look at it from the partner's point of view. They have cash flow issues. They may have mergers or acquisitions they're going through. Um, they need to understand how do I now supply sometimes double and triple the security downstream to the end user customers. The end user customers are sitting there going, I can protect the network within the building, but now I've got 500 people scattered around. How do I control this? Right. So working with our channel partners to really get a handle on what that looks like, how to evolve what that looks like, and in the middle of all of that, WatchGuard bought a company. So we bought uh, Panda Security in Spain. It's a global company. And we had to now onboard an entire company and an entire platform of security offerings that actually help the partners secure everybody down at the endpoint. Right. So it was a tumultuous time. And really the key there, and when I look at the partner, is, and I put this in quotes, it's kind of like being a doctor. Do no damage. Right. Yes. Help them get through the process without damaging one, the relationship and two, their business right. um, so that they're able to survive through this whole thing. So our priority has really been to understand where the partners want to go. Many of them have moved into managed services where they were not before. They were almost forced into it yeah. um, and to be able to provide them with ways to buy and sell product efficiently and effectively into the marketplace. Right, right. So let, let's do a snap or, or a, a deeper dive in each one of those areas and I'll break it down and correct me if I go off course. All right. So, sure. so you have this, you have everything going on in the world for lack of a better term, right? You got just everything. Pandemonium, right? Breaks out. Pretty much. Yep. You need to adjust your partner program to reflect how partners are engaging and supporting customers, but you also need to align the right technologies with that partner program, and you've done an acquisition. So that's my long-winded yep. way of saying, uh, have you had the right R&D in place, the right solutions and programs in place all rolled together for the partners so that they can go execute with their customers? 
I think we I think we did because we looked at it from the right point of view. We didn't look at it as WatchGuard a company. We right. looked at it as who was actually selling product into the marketplace and who has to support that product. Right. So it really was channel focus first. The program that we had set up prior to going into this uh, was set up as what we call a value-based program. It wasn't a volume-based program. So as a value-based program, to get into the program, you simply had to mm -hmm learn about our products, go through our training and take a certification course. That allowed you to get leveled in the program. The more of those you do, the higher the level, the higher the discount. So it's very straightforward. But as we added new product in, we also allowed partners to come into the partner program through a new doorway that we didn't have before. So we've always had our network security through our firewalls, et cetera. Um, we had our secure Wi-Fi plus our multi-factor authentication for the ID side, but now we had endpoint. And there were partners that came on board that said, I don't want to worry about anything else. I need to do endpoint first. Right. So we rebuilt that program entry so that they could do that. We did that very fast and very effectively. From there, we can then expand out and help them grow their business. The second piece to this is making sure that in a situation where cash flow may be very challenging um, because companies don't know where to spend money. Yeah. So the partner needs to take a look at their own business and go, how do we do this? So we created what was called a FlexPay program. And that FlexPay program essentially is a bucket of ways to buy product. Mm -hmm. um, and you can choose as a partner which way you want to go. You don't have to go any one way. You can choose a variety. But you can um, simply buy on term, a one-year or three-year term. You can buy points and then apply those points to products that are put into the field. If you pull them back out, we stop charging points. So it's a very effective model, but we also added in a subscription model, even on our hardware side. So if you said, look, most of my customers pay month to month, is it possible for me to buy month to month, add a little bit onto that for my overhead or my services and then sell that? to the customer. So we built that program in as well. So now that's all set up with distributors to even be able to do that with our hardware products, which hadn't really been available before other than leasing. Yeah. Right? So you can go through a lease, but then you're tying up credit. So in doing it this way, there's no credit tie up. Yeah. So it makes it much easier for the channel partner to decide with this customer, I want to handle it this way with another customer. I want to handle it a different way. And we did that across an, our entire product line during that, during that pandemic portion. Yeah. That's impressive. And, you know, you've pointed out a, some important nuances there. I, you know, I remember the birth of hardware as a service and, and the things of that nature. And, and one of the questions I was taught to ask early on was like, wait a minute, is it leasing or is it something yeah. else? Because, um, you know, there, there's so many different flavors to hardware as a service. It sounds like yeah. you guys have built a, um, a, what I would call a have it your way consumption model for the partner that aligns with the end customer. Not, not to say we're like fast food, but right, right. Um, do you want fries with that? <laughs> for the, yeah, so, for, yeah, for those enough old enough to know the slogan, yes. Yeah, yeah. So we really did try to look at it from their point of view. I've been a small business owner myself. We have other people on the team who've actually worked for uh, managed service providers or VARs or even in distribution that we can sit there and say, okay, so day to day, how am I going to make this operate? And then be able to go out to the partner community and say, here's what we're thinking. Give me some feedback on this. Right. And you're right. Leasing is a real challenge because not only it's very contract based, you've got a bank involved, there's credit that gets tied up. Now you may be in a situation where you can't get out of it again. Right. So we wanted to make this as flexible as possible. So WatchGuard working with the distributors found a way to make that happen. And it's been very effective. Got it. Got it. Okay. Now you just mentioned something that I know you're passionate about your job. But, but there are those with passion and then there's those who like have that extra spark of passion. And you just mentioned something that explains the, the extra spark of, of, of passion. And that is you're a former small business owner, right? I think yep. you can't fake that in this market. You know, I, I'm a, a, a small, well, former small business owner. We sold the company, but but I, I've never been an MSP or a VAR, but I've, mm -hmm. I've walked um, uh, in parallel to them, so to speak, right? So I guess my question, the long question based on that <laughs> comment is, you can walk the walk and talk the talk with the small business partners, right? And as they grow, can WatchGuard grow with them? Are you also, this is more than a small business story, you're also help, helping them scale the mid-market and enterprise? We absolutely are. Um, and we're always looking at ways to assist companies in doing that. So um, let me let me kind of take a step back and and look at this from a business perspective. Mm 
If I come in and talk to an owner of a business, if I can have the conversation about things they care about, has nothing to do with our product, has nothing to do with our technology, but I can sit down and talk about cash flow. I can talk about back end costs, profitability, um, and we can really start to look at, and these, this is the line I always throw out, how much do you want to sell and how fast do you want to get there? Mm-hmm. And then build a program for them that incorporates everything that we've talked about so far, plus the marketing arm. And that's how we grow them into a bigger space. But I let them make the choice because it really is their choice. It's not anything I can convince someone to do. They have to choose, am I going to go into a certain market? Give you another example. Uh, I think it was four years ago um, when we had our partner conference, I did a presentation to our best partners, about 300 partners we bring in just for North America. Um, And I asked the question, I said, how many of you know what vertical market you're selling into and which one is your biggest vertical market? Right. And out of the room, there were about three people who knew because they don't go back and look at the numbers. If you can come into a partner and say, let's take a look at this and let's see if we can understand where your, the point of your spear could be to drive your business forward. You come in as a consultant and not as a consultant in the technical side, but a real business consultant. Right. That makes a huge difference to these partners. That's how we grow them up. Then we get into mergers and acquisitions, and that's the next big piece. So many of the owners are thinking, all right, five years from now, I want to sell the company, but I, I, my, my kids don't want it, but I don't want to keep working. And they're very nervous about this. Yeah. How can a company like WatchGuard, looking at it from the business side, help them in looking at other companies that you know of that want to buy either smaller companies or companies that have a specific platform that they're looking for? Now, putting these pieces together, um, you're creating that larger market for yourself as a manufacturer, as well as for the marketplace itself. Yeah, huge trend. So, you know, as we talk on uh, mid-November here. I think Channel E to E, we've covered 950 M&A deals so far this year. <laughs> and, you know, I, I always want to be careful not to, I don't want to suggest that every MSP or VAR is up for sale. What I do want to suggest is every VAR or MSP, IT consulting firm should be ready for that knock on the door, which I think is what you're suggesting. Like if, if you get that knock on the door, you should have your house in order, understand what the process could be. Um, and but also to your point, would your family want it? Would are there executives right. in the company that would want it? So it's great to hear that your ecosystem is working with you to have these conversations and and sort of cross pollinate the dialogue. I'm I'm sure you're yeah. in some ways you're a matchmaker um, w- without being the official matchmaker. You, you're you're getting deals done for your partners. Um, we're trying to, and we're actually working outside of our normal um, areas as well. Yeah. Um, we've worked with RSPA the retail group. We've worked with BTA, right? The big copier guys. Um, Because we understand that in telephony or in print, that there are these other companies that are looking to acquire or looking to merge with other technologies. And these are the places where it doesn't seem a natural fit day one, but as you start to have the conversations, it does start to make sense. Um, I hate to say this, but everybody has their price. That's and exactly that, right. That, you know. that adage is real, right? <laughs> so if somebody comes along and they say, you know what? I'm really interested in taking on this business. I'll pay you for a year to help me do that. And you're thinking, well, I had thought about this a while back. Maybe now is the time. Yeah. And maybe it is. Maybe it's not. But we're here if you want to have those conversations to help with that. Think that through. Is this the right time to do that? Um, and we saw it just like you did. Um, we saw, gosh, just in our own partner base, something like, 80 something mergers that happened over the yeah. last year and a half. It was huge. And even distributors are doing it in Europe. Yep. Um, so we're seeing a lot of that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now you just mentioned uh, various types of partners um, that, mm-hmm. that are out, you know, in some ways outside of your traditional MSP or VAR. Is there a, a sweet spot definition for the types of partners you're engaging with? Or is it all over the map? Um, it's kind of all over the map, but they sort of put themselves into certain areas. So when we take a look at our ecosystem, um, I have what are traditionally my WatchGuard One partners who, as we started this program early on, they were sort of small to medium guys. Over the last two, three years, maybe four years, they have started to evolve into more managed services. They may not have made the decision to be there, 
but their customers have driven them there. And we all know what's going on, right? You don't have um, the people who can staff um, the technology at a company. So they're going to leverage their partners to do that because right. um, they can they can manage more end user customers than that end user customer who has to build a NOC or a SOC or bring on a technology team like that. But there's also another group of managed service providers that start to stretch into MSP or MSSP that sits in the middle. And that's sort of that medium to enterprise space. And we're starting to um, talk to a lot of those players today. Yeah. And then I have a completely separate team our strategic accounts team that's way up at the high end. And they're looking at how do I work with big guys like Telefonica, Deloitte, all of those really yeah. big service providers, not to become partners of ours, but how do we stretch our technology into that space for them? Yep. So we're looking at that entire continuum all the time. And as I said early on in this conversation, do no damage. So when I look at my WatchGuard One guys that sit here, I'm not forcing them to go anywhere. I'm happy with their growth. I'm happy with what they do and who they service. We have products for them and they fit perfectly into that space. But that next piece up, the medium um, to sort of smaller enterprise space, that's our next big target to go yeah. look at. Now, on top of that, I got nationals, I got e-commerce guys. So we're looking again at the entire package. We don't yeah. just focus in one space. Got it. Fantastic. You know, yep. it, it, it's interesting to watch all this. And, you know, I, I think from the owner standpoint, you mentioned the, 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 you know, the likes of a Deloitte. Some MSPs may be like, oh, you know, that's not really my area. But you know what? Deloitte has bought, I don't know what the number is now. I think it's <laughs> roughly a dozen IT consulting firms and MSPs over the last year. You'd be surprised. Yeah. I think everyone at this point has got to keep their eyes and ears open in terms of who they could be or should be or aligning with. Yeah. Now, the other thing that you brought up that's really interesting to me is it sounds like you're helping, and I mean this term in a good way, not a bad way. You're helping partners to reverse engineer their business. It sounds like you're saying, where do you want to be financially X in, in X amount of time, months, years, whatever you, yeah. oh, well, let's work the math on that. Let's right. reverse engineer it to today. And now, now we can chart a path. Is that essentially what you're doing? That's exactly what we do. I can walk into a company that sells my product today, a right. partner today. Um, and I can ask them, what is your total revenue in a year? And I can pretty much nail exactly what my percentage of that overall revenue is. Right. So there's two things to consider. If they're topping out on my percentage, Either they need to, if they're not selling all of our products, bring another product line in, right? That will increase that percentage across the total. Or if they're already topped out and selling all of our products, how can I help their company market themselves to become larger themselves? So even if my percentage of their overall revenue doesn't increase, the dollars within that percentage do as their company grows. Yeah. So I look, at, I look at this two ways to make sure that we're triggering on all the points we can possibly trigger on. Yeah. 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 I mean, you're looking at these levers you can push and pull for both yep. you and the partner. Got it. Got it. So, yep. so like I said, I, I mentioned it a couple of times, you know, we're mid November here. We've done a good look back in terms of where you've been. The priorities have been, give me a look forward with, without revealing any company secrets or any secrets on the whiteboard. Mm -hmm. What are some of the priorities for how you want to align with partners going forward as we march into 2023? So as we go into 2023, I think what we're going to see is some partners are going to focus in certain areas that other partners are not. Mm. So for example, I'm going to have several partners that are going to tilt up security operations centers. They may want to partner with other partners to sell those services between themselves. I want to be there to help that happen right. because if they're using our technology, we understand it all. Okay. The other thing that's happening um, with respect to um, our um, threat detection and response coming up next year yeah. is our cloud service um, will start to look at what's actually going on with each product. So the more product categories um, of WatchGuard security products you have in play, the better you're going to be able to see what's going on in your threat map overall, because yeah. they're all going to use AI to talk to each other. So even though our products will work with competitive products, if you combine our products together within our cloud infrastructure, the detection response becomes much, much stronger. So that's another big play that we have going on. Um, I would suspect that we're going to evolve our product lines, mainly in the endpoint, in secure Wi-Fi. Um, again, I'm not going to give up any secrets that, <laughs> that you know, people wouldn't expect. Um, but I think in the management of the... Uh, 
technology that is being sold through the partner. We're going to work on the ease of management. I'll give you a couple of examples of what we've done in the past and where we'll work in the future. So right. a classic example is from a partner that has to staff a technology group in the back end. Um, if you put a firewall in place, you had to roll a truck, take a guy, put him out for two hours, set it up, come back. So we created this thing called remote deploy right. or rapid deploy, which would allow you to set up in the cloud Say you had 35 entities that you needed to send firewalls to, you set up the profile, ship the box, they plug it in, goes to the cloud, you never rolled a truck, and everything in that security profile is done. Right. We'll be looking at a lot of that across our other products to make sure that we're making it as easy as possible for profitability in the partnership, the reseller organization, so they don't have to take their tech guys offline. Okay, so for, for um, viewers and listeners who want to learn some more, where, where do they go? Is there, there a particular URL? Where, where do they go out to? Go, go to watchguard.com. There's a link there that says become a partner. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and click that link, fill out your information. One of my team or one of our channel account managers will contact you. And I have to tell you, just so everybody knows, if you don't get contacted and you send an email to the watchguard one dl I see every single one of them. And I make sure you get called back. So if you ever have a problem, Send a note there. It'll come to me and we'll have a chat and make sure that you get the information you need. Awesome. Well, Mark, thank you so much for walking us through uh, some of the trends you're seeing out in the market. I appreciate it. You bet, Joe. Anytime. All right. Take care. Thank you.